Okay, theorem 9.2.1 describes what's known as the multiplication theorem or the multiplication rule. Basically, it says if the first step in a process that has k steps can be done in n1 ways, and the second step can be done in n2 ways, and so on, all the way to the last step, then the total number of ways that the operation can be performed in is n1 times n2 times n3 and so on all the way to nk okay so this is going to be important i would like you to take a minute here and try to memorize the formula so let's talk about a simple application of this in example number two so it says a typical personal identification number is a sequence of any four symbols chosen from the 26 letters of the alphabet and the 10 digits in this problem okay so the 10 digits we're talking about are the 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And in a pin number, in this case, or in a pin, we are allowed to have repetition. So in other terms, you can have a pin that looks like A, 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 A. Even though it's kind of a silly one, you can have that. Or you can have things like A, 1, 2, 2. That could be possible. The question is, if all these restrictions were applied, how many different pins can there be? Okay, so. Remember, there are four symbols, and so what we're gonna do is figure out how many possible characters can be placed in the, four, in the first chosen symbol. So the first chosen character can be one of any one of the letters or the chosen digits. How many are there? Well, there are 26 letters and there are 10 digits. So there's a total of 36 different ways. Now, since repeat is allowed, the second chosen character and the third and the fourth can also be the same exact thing. So I wrote the same sentence four times in a row, even though that's kind of silly, I shouldn't be doing that, but I just want to show you how this relates to the theorem, okay? So basically my first step is this one, choosing the first character. It can be done in 36 different ways. My second step is choosing the second character and it can also be done in 36 ways the third step the fourth step and so on okay so all the steps that I can do can happen in 36 different ways so the total number of possibility the total number of pins is going to be 36 times 36 times 36 times 36 so basically um, 36 to the power of 4 so I'm going to squish this down a little bit and put that number in so 36 to the power of 4 is going to be 1,679,616. So that's how many to total possible pins there are, okay? And I'm always using the multiplication rule in this problem. So I hope that was pretty straightforward. So now let's talk about part two, which is the same question, but what if now repeats are not allowed? So let's do something a little bit different this time. So instead of writing all the paragraph and all the words, I'm gonna draw a little picture and this diag that diagram is going to basically represent my four letter pin or my four digit pin or my four character pin in general okay so now in the first spot i can have any of the letters or any of the digits so there are how many ways well a total of 36 different ways of doing this so there are 26 letters and 10 digits and any of them can be placed in this first spot now what about the second spot? Suppose I put A right here. Can I choose A again in the second spot? No, I can no longer choose A, but I can choose any of the other 25 letters or 10 possible digits. So my choices have went down by one. So now there are 35 different combinations or characters that I can put there. Let's say I put the number three in here. Okay, so now what's gonna happen in my next position? Well, I can no longer choose A, and I can no longer choose 3, so how many possible choices remain? Well, there are basically 25 letters remaining and 9 possible digits, so that's a total of 34 different things. So there are 34 different ways in which I can fill this third position. And so let's say I put the letter um, T. What about the next one? Well, same thing again, repeat the same logic. You'll find out that there are 33 different ways. Okay, so A3, T5 is just one possible pin, but the same logic can, can be applied if I choose any other random letter or um, symbol. So 
Now the question is, well, what's the total? And so again, since the first step can be done in 36 ways, the second step can be done in 35 ways, and so on and so forth, then the total number of pins is gonna be, the total is 36 times 35 times 34 times 33, and that's again using the multiplication rule. So roughly speaking, 1.4 million possible pins have no repeats, okay? So the first one was pins with repeats, the second one was pins without repeats. So what about part three? What's the probability that a pin chosen at random contains no repeats? So the probability of the chosen random pin has no repeats. So what I have to do in this case is the following. I have to basically calculate how many pins there are in this universe without repeats and divided by the total number of pins with or without repeats. And that's pretty straightforward. We already calculated both of those numbers. The first number is 1413720. That's how many pins have no repeats. And divided by the total number of pins in this universe, which was calculated in part one of this problem. So let's divide them out and see what happens. So in general, there are 84.17% chance that if you choose a random pin, you're gonna end up with one that has no repeating symbols. And that's the answer, and that's the end of the problem.